Well, good afternoon, everyone, or should I say good evening? Um, good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord. Everybody, this is uh, our midweek um, Bible study. I'm Bishop Siggers, and I'm so glad you were able to join us on tonight. We're just getting everything together. Pray that your day was wonderful. Amen. So, praise God. We don't want to take any time, waste any time. Um, of course, we're going to say hello, honey. You want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Amen. You want to come over and say hey? Or... No. <laughs> Amen. So, praise the Lord. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this Bible study, Father, and all those who are here, Lord God, and those who may be joining later or looking at it or watching this later. We pray that it would be a blessing to all. Lord, I pray like every time, Lord, we come before you that the Holy Spirit will be the teacher in the midst of us, oh God, and we we'll thank you for it. We we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Praise God. So we're on part two of our lesson, Relationship in the Body of Christ. Where did these lessons come from, Bishop? Where did the lessons come from? Yeah. Um, this is a lesson that we got from... A teaching that I was covering, or I, I took um, some years ago by Prophet E. Bernard Jordan, amen, and it was a powerful lesson in spiritual protocol, and these were, um, these are actually the teachings from that lesson, so what I did is took it and um, created my own little syllabus, and we're teaching the material. I thought that it would be a blessing to the body of Christ, because I believe that the body of Christ is in, in bad is bad need or in dire straits for um, protocol and order, proper protocol and order in the body of Christ. So I thought that it would um, be um, to our advantage to go through this series of lessons. So I'm enjoying it. I pray that you're enjoying it as well. Amen. So 
uh, spiritual protocol is the amen understanding of the government of order you know, the order how do we understand what order is about in terms of the kingdom amen so each one of this these lessons are taking us into different areas what we'll understand. So this um, time we're talking about uh, relationships in the body of Christ. I was just looking for something I didn't, I needed tonight, but I guess I don't see it, so I may not need it. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So, um, um, Pastor asked that question. Amen. So, praise God. So I pray that you are ready. We're going to jump right into it. Amen. We got about. Um, <clears throat> Maybe about seven or eight more lessons, I believe. Um, I'm not totally sure. I have to get that for you if you need to know. Okay. Um, it's like 18 lessons all together. So we've covered the um, law of subjection. We covered um, God and delegated authority. We, call, we covered the planning of the Lord, the couple of will, redemptive revelation, um, covering and uncovering. Uh, the law of the house, and now we're on relationship in the body of Christ. Amen. And like I said, each one of these um, lessons are going to touch on um, that various um, subject matter uh, in terms of just taking us digging. You know, it's, it's, on it's pulling back the layers so that we'll understand what protocol is all about. So <clears throat> we are talking about relationship in the body, and this is um, um, let part two of the lesson, like I said, I want to do each lesson in two parts so I don't give you too much at one time and it will be timely to do that. So it, it just works out better to break it down into two sections. So <clears throat> uh, last week we learned, um, um, that the physical body has many different members and each one of these members have their own, um, individual purpose. Um, the eyes for seeing, the ears for hearing, the hands for holding and touching, the legs for walking, the mouth for speaking and eating, bringing nourishment to the body. And they all are connected together as one united and uh, uh, um, entity to nurture and care and protect the entire body. Amen. So for the body to be able to function properly it needs these areas to assist now I know that in some cases um, people lose certain parts of the body but what happens then the other body the other parts will take the place of those parts that are missing to make sure that the body continues to move on isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. uh, even if someone is a um, uh, cripple uh, or if they've lost the operation of their legs, the hand, the arms are gets they get stronger, you know, and they 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 they're able to move that body around and do things that the legs couldn't do. Of course, they would need some help, you know, to assist. But um, in the body, Amen, is is set up by God, Amen, fashioned by God to take care of everything that the body needs. So we have all these parts. Amen. These members working together in unity to bring about a, a powerful move. Amen. So therefore, it's important to note that um, just like the, the physical body um, needs the help of its members, the church through relationship um, are connected one to another to be effective in exercising dominion and, and rulership on the earth. Um, over the kingdom of darkness. And we talked about that in lesson one, about we are to have um, dominion and rulership in the earth realm, amen, on behalf of God, because this is God's earth, amen. Mm -hmm. Although the enemy has infiltrated, amen, and he's doing his thing, but I want you to know that at the end, the church is going to always win, amen. amen. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about Joshua last week and how the 36 men, Amen. Because um, um, Joshua was out of, not Joshua, but Achan was a man that was out of order and he sinned and he caused these 36 men to die. Amen. Because of his disobedience. Amen. From the things that he did. What happened is when they, um, 
um, took over or they um, overran Jericho when God gave them the victory over Jericho. He gave them some, some, some specific um, orders of things to do. He told them not to, um, to um, the brass, the gold, and the iron, the iron, and um, these these things were to be sac consecrated to God as a sacrifice in the house of God. So the silver, the gold, and all these things was brought into the the storehouse of of God. Amen. The kingdom and the treasury. Amen. Of God, but. Achan decided that he was going to take some gold for himself, some silver, and a, a Babylonian garment, amen, which they said was just totally beautiful. He couldn't pass it up. But in doing so, he was being disobedient to what God had said, amen. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in this lesson. Um, <clears throat> so when God, uh, he, he decided to use his own understanding and, and keep back that which was consecrated to God. So he substituted um, through his own rationalization for the wisdom of God. And, and in this lesson, as we begin to understand that, we, we can't rationalize things out to make it line up for what we want. Because when we do, we, we uh, cancel out anything that God has. Amen. So once God has said something and he put in his word, don't overstep God to make things work out for you. And I've seen many times people would take things and they would take uh, even sometimes scriptures and make it, they, they take it out of context to uh, make it fit their situation. But if anything, we have to fit into the situation that the scriptures were um, first written and not just eisegetically approach the scriptures. We have to exegetically approach it so that we can get down to the true meaning of the scripture. And sometimes I don't get upset with people when they take things out of context. It's, it's only because they hadn't took the time to really do the research. You know understand what I'm saying? So um, it's important and it's incumbent upon, upon us that as we approach the scriptures, that we will make sure that we take the time that we need to take to get the full meaning of what the scriptures are saying. And then it will help us to move forward so that we are not just rationalizing things in our own mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, and because Achan did that, as a result, um, um, these 36 men were, uh, they died. They didn't have to die. Amen. But he decided he was going to do what he was going to do. And he caused others to suffer. And sometimes others can suffer for our mistakes, amen, that we make. So we got to make sure that um, our heart is clear and our mind is clear, especially as leaders, amen, because people are watching and people are, are following, amen. And, and um, um, it's, 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 it's important because um, to whom much is given, much is required, amen. amen. So um, to bring us up to our next lesson, uh, for today, uh, and let me just make a couple more points that um, uh, I believe that um, because the Holy Spirit is within us, um, that there's nothing that's too hard for God, Amen. and nothing that He cannot work out as kingdom saints of God. So any situation that come about, any problem, any issue, our God through the Holy Spirit is able to handle any of those problems. Amen. Amen. Um, even if it's gossip, it can be um, having discord in the church or accusations that could come forth for rebellion or unforgiveness or even sin. Amen. If we have the, the power of God in our hand, if Jesus is on the inside of us, there's no way that we should not be able to bring things to the reasoning table and, and move forward and do the things that's pleasing unto God. There used to be a, a um, um, slogan that I think they adopted in like the 2000s or early 2000s where they said, what would Jesus do? And I think it's something that we can think about because in many situations that we're um, vacillating over trying to make the, you know, um, why don't we think sometime in our mind, well, how would Jesus handle this situation? How would Jesus handle that situation? How would Jesus react? How would Jesus uh, 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 respond to this type of uh, um, uh, questioning or whatever the case may be? So I think um, in understanding um, the relationship in the body of Christ, 
we have to have relationship with each other and the little things that come up you're going to have problems just like any other family you're going to have things that come up but um, because of the relationship or our relation with the relationship with Jesus we can make it through it amen nothing's too hard amen sometimes it may take a while in family because families have a hard time um, dealing with situations depending on the communication gap but when we really trust God and we really give God our heart and and we pray this prayer our Lord create um, David said in Psalms 51 he said Lord created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me Amen. Not in the person, but Lord, create the right spirit within me. Because if I can get my spirit right, right, then I can help you to get yours right if it need be. Amen. And even if you don't get yours right, I want to make sure that I'm right before God. And um, I, I just wanted to just share that. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's let's go ahead and move on. Because uh, we need relationship. And uh, we're doing something now when I get to a point that um, I want to, I'm going to probably ask you a question at the end of the, the day. We have a little um, uh, a little sound here, a little blurb here that we're going to give you. And is it is it working okay? No. Look like our radio clunked out on it. So we're going to have to do the opposite of that. What did we have the last we have, time? Uh, um, you can use that. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. okay. So we're going to have to do a different thing because our, our technology ran out on us, so we need to do it now. We need relationship in the body of Christ. We need relationship in the body of Christ. So Tell remember them why that. We're doing that. <laughs> remember that at the end, because at the end we're going to ask questions, and the, I'm actually giving you the answers ahead of time, so you don't have to struggle. So we need relationship in the body of Christ. You got to remember that, okay? We need oneness. Uh, we need unity. Um, not division or separation. Let the love of God, amen, strengthen our hearts and mind that we may all come to the unity of the faith. And we've been teaching on faith, amen. And we know that it's impossible. We can't even please God without faith, right. amen. So the first thing that we need to have before we have anything is to have the faith of God and working in our lives, amen. amen. So, uh, and this week, um, uh, we're going to be talking about lack and poverty, lack and poverty, lack and poverty. And I, and we, we, I want you to, okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she was having too much fun over there. <laughs> oh, lack is brought into the body naturally and spiritually when members are deficient because other members are not bringing in their supply. Amen. So all that, all that is one. I'll say it again. Lack is brought to the body of Christ naturally and spiritually when members are deficient because other members are not bringing in their supply. So the question is, what brings prosperity? And um, it's when the joints, amen, and the relationship and the individual's members are supplying what God has given to them. So uh, when we talk about members or the, the members of the body, each one brings something to the table. Amen. So um, the hands, amen, are able to nourish the body and to protect the body. It can protect different things and any foreign um, things that may come. It can also can um, the defend the body with the hands. Amen. So there's a, a lot of different things. The eyes can see as way so that you don't walk into a wall. Amen. So you have the eyes. Turn, turn could you turn that a little this, this way? This way? No, the, uh, this way. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thank you. So um so so we have these parts of the body and each one is very vital, amen. If you need there's a fire, you need to run away, you can get away real quick, out of danger, or maybe you're trying to get to somewhere quickly that you need to be. So each one of the parts have to supply their part. And if it does not supply their part, then there will be uh, a deficit. Amen. There will be lack. Amen. So um, we understand that. So the question is, what brings prosperity and when all, uh, what brings prosperity? And what brings prosperity is when all of the joints 
in relationship are working congruently together. Right. Amen. So when when this happens, there is no lack. And and and, and uh, and actually, when the body is all working together, not only is there no lack, but there is always or will always be an abundance. Mm -hmm. Amen. In everything that you need. So when we say naturally and spiritually, uh, we're talking about the spiritual needs will be met, but also um, natural needs. Amen. There's, there's things sometimes in the body and people have things that they need. Amen. And they should be able to come back to the church for help at times, amen, not to take advantage, amen, not to um, exploit, but there should be times when the church should be able to help people in some sort or some way, amen, to bring uh, relief from them, but it's hard to do that when there's nothing coming in to church, to the church so that the church will have to give, amen. I thank God we have a very unique situation at Freedom Empowerment Ministry Center because I'm a, a working bishop, amen, so um, that means I don't have a salary, I don't have any of those things that's coming to me, so anything that comes, amen, can be stored with, the, you know, of course you have your expenses that you have, but there can be something there, amen, when people need, amen, and I believe that in this last days that we need to just kind of change our, our, our thought process uh, from the, the secular thought that the pastor is stealing the money and this is doing this and they're doing that. See, that's just foolishness, amen. And I, I want to say there are times when there are some that are not doing things correctly. However, that's not always the case, amen. So, But as we trust God in the spirit and obey when he says, give your tithe, give your offering, do these things. You may have gifts. You may have a car that can pick up people. You may be a person that is an encourager. You may be a person that is able. You may be a teacher. You can help teach. We have you have seniors that may need some some computer help. Amen. To help them to understand the the, the internet highway and different things that may come about. So we bring these gifts these natural gifts to the body, as well as we bring the spiritual gifts, amen. And as we do that, it makes us strong, amen. It gives us a place where we can stand in a place of abundance, spiritually and naturally, amen. See, because lack and lack will come only when a member or a joint, amen, is holding something back. And we never want to hold back anything on God. Amen. All things are profitable to those that believe. Amen. And those who follow after the word of God and follow after his precepts. See, sometimes we may feel that our part is really not important. But I want you to know every part is important. Now, some may have more, and we have that. Some have more than others. But every part that you have it is vitally important for the body of Christ. Amen. So amen. as we understand that, amen, we can begin to do great things. Gideon, when he was a, um, the, he was called a mighty man of God, he said, I don't know. I'm not a mighty man of God or whatever. But God used him because he, was, he went on and was obedient. He asked God a few questions. He did some tests to make sure God was talking to him. Amen. But when he did, and he followed what God said. God blessed him. He blessed him. He took 300 men, Gideon, and he and he caused 144,000 Midianites to turn and start killing their own selves. Amen. And all he had was some lights, some 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 things that were just totally uh, um, natural things that couldn't call, couldn't hurt a, a dime. Amen. Couldn't hurt anything. Amen. A bird. Amen. But he used these things, these pots and these these lights to to frighten the Midianites so bad they just started killing each other and just ran and left everything for the spoils of the Israelites. Amen. So um, it doesn't matter how big you are, how much you have, how much you don't have, your your part is important in relationship to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. See, the Bible tells us um, that by one spirit, one was baptized into one body. 
and we are joined together, no matter, no matter our position in the world, Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free men, people of all nationalities are all joined together in Christ. So when Christ is our common denominator, anything is possible. Wow, that's When good. Christ is our common denominator, we can do all things because there's nothing that's too hard for God. Amen. Thank you. I remember our reading, I think last week I was reading in Luke, and as Zechariah was in the temple doing his, his uh, work in the temple as the priest, offering up sacrifice, he was there, and all of a sudden he looked beside the altar, and there was an angel standing there, which scared him uh, um, senseless. And when he saw the angel, the angel said, Fear not, Zechariah. He said, I've come from the face, from the presence of God. Amen. And, and you know what? When, when you come into a place of unity, you come into a place of oneness, and when God is moving in our midst, there you be surprised. You never know what may happen. Amen. But he met that angel, and the point I was trying to make, when he told him that his wife was going to have a, a, a baby, she was up old in years, she had passed her time of having children, and he didn't believe it. He said, how could this happen? The angel said, is there anything, you know, too hard for God? Amen. Right. And he said, because you didn't believe me, Zachariah, you're not going to be able to speak. He took away his, the, his tongue. His tongue was tied, and he was not able to speak until the child was born. And the child was named John. Amen. John the Baptist. Praise be to God. Amen. He did mm -hmm. mighty thing. He was the forerunner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is anything too hard for God? No. I think not. I think not. So as the body of Christ, we need to be in right relationship with one another. Amen. And, and we need to fellowship uh, openly, not forming uh, um, selective groups. Amen. Such groups are often the reason why churches don't grow. And, and have you ever seen a pinball machine? Well, on a pinball machine, um, a new member comes, uh, I'll say this, well, a new member comes into a church. It can be like the ball. And, and she may try to, or she, he may try to um, be a part of this department or that department, and they be shifted all around and bounce here and there. But because um, there's no one to really, no one wants to let them in the ministry, then what happens, they eventually roll back out the door. Wow. Amen. So um, if a church or if a church, any church, if it's going to grow, it must be open up and let others be a part of it. Amen. Amen. And I know that there's processes, there's membership uh, uh, training yeah. and classes, but uh, we, we should be uh, willing to, you know, even have small groups where we can put people together so that they can learn, amen, because they came to learn. They didn't come just to uh, uh, look around at the walls, but they, they came to do something. They wanted, they're excited about God, and we want to make a room, make room for them, amen. See, too much energy concentrated in one place is pretty dangerous anyway. Right, right. <laughs> there needs to be an outlet for, um, and, and needs for, uh, to bring others in. So uh, I know it's a little sobering what I'm saying to you tonight, but I want you to know just how important relationship is. And as people are coming, we have to keep ourselves in a place where, where we're approachable. I was listening to my wife. I was talking to her on the phone, and she stopped at McDonald's to get her coffee or whatever, an oatmeal or whatever she was getting, and I was still on the phone. She pulls up. Hey, my sweetie. How are you this morning? Oh, don't you look wonderful. And I'm, I'm sitting up here. I said, do she know these people? And then she, then she said, well, I hope you have a wonderfully blessed day, my love. All right. Bye. And then she goes where you pay the money. I'm on the phone listening. I'm not with her. And then he gets up there. She gets to him. She said, how you doing, sir? You know what? I got something to tell you. I have something I have something awesome to share with you, you know. And and he would say, okay, okay, ma'am, okay. And then she, he said, what? She said, did you know that Jesus loves you? I'm like, listen to this little lady over here. She just, 
she going off here. And um, she was just talking to the people all nice. And I, I think that um, and when we house the, the, the spirit of God on the inside of us, it should not just be at at the church, for the church. But yeah. everywhere we go, we should be um, displaying the the love of God to people because they need it. And I, you'd be surprised at how they responded to her. They were so happy. They were thankful. They were saying, I just heard them laughing and everything because she was talking to them. And when the t last time we really took the time to talk to someone, amen, to make them feel like they're special. And if we can't do it inside the church, you're definitely not going to do it outside the church. Wow. So um, I, I think it's a place in relationship that we begin to really love each other for who we are. Amen. 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 See, and um, we, we don't have time um, um, to, uh, and, and when we do that, that's the point I want to make. When you do that, you won't have time for gossip. You won't have time for maliciousness. Amen. Well, and some say, well, Bishop, what's maliciousness? Well, it's being spiteful. It's being hurtful to one another to be unkind to one another, to be mean to one another, or to be offensive towards someone, or to or for someone to be offensive towards you. Amen. But once we understand relationship, amen, and then we're actually doing something, then we won't be so stuffy. <laughs> amen. amen. So uh, we, we must have an outlet in order to experience growth. And that's what I'm saying. In the church, we need to have, if we're going to... Uh, uh, grow we're gonna to have to have we're gonna to have to do something and find something to do i have people that just sit there every week never do anything say anything but listen that's not good we we want to encourage people let's be in a relationship let's talk sometimes we don't even talk to one another in certain places not at our church i mean but uh, i'm talking about the church in south africa but uh wherever you are whatever church get involved in what's going on get involved with uh, with other people, get to know them, you know, be nice, talk, you know, bring them a, a, a pound cake or something, you know, just, wow. just do something, yeah. you know, and, and God will bless you. I had one of the mothers just came and brought, brought, brought us, brought both of us dinners. I mean, it was, you know, she put it in a bag and, um, said, I got something for you. I want you to put it in your car. So I went, put in the car, got home. We had dressing, and greens, dinner. And, and, and sweet potato pie and cake and what? potato salad. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? Amen. Lord. But I, I, it was that's just love. And it doesn't have to be the pastor. It can be anybody. Amen. But as we share that love, as we share the, the that that peace with others, we we build a relationship. We build a bridge where we can come over that bridge and now we connect with one another in love. Amen. Right. 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 Um, in in Psalms. 133, it says it like this, Oh, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And it said, it's like the precious ointment yes. upon the head and ran down the beards, even, even Aaron's, Aaron's beard, beard, and went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing. Watch this. He commanded the blessing. Amen. When the order is in place and the oil begins to come down. Amen. And everyone's in their place and everybody's operating and every joint is supplying as it should. Amen. He said he'll command the blessing to be in that place. Even life forevermore. Wow. Wow. Oh. We, thank you, honey. We need unity. We are to dwell in unity. We are to dwell in unity. Yes. Amen. See, uh, uh, I need to know that at the end. We need to dwell in unity. Um, um, there's not um, to be a, a mere union. Okay. Okay. Because if we just are in a union with each other, a union is like a club, a club or a right? merger right. or a 
a, a, a alliance. Right. I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. I'm not just when I say unity. I'm not just talking about having a mere union or connection, um, like a club or merger or something. Because in those venues, it's like it's, it's self interest. So you getting you come there to get something for you. Amen. You're not you're not concerned with the union, how they do what they do, or being a part of what they're trying to accomplish or the club. You're just there for 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 to say I'm a part of the club, I'm part of the union, I'm a part of the alliance. And that's not what we come to the house of God for. Right. See, because true unity is not a union. Right. But it but true unity needs to be developed because um true unity is is what I would call a place where there's harmony. Right. A place where there's one accordness, right. a place where there is oneness. Yeah. See, that goes past a merger. That goes past just being a union because you're in the same place, but right. there's no there's no real connection. There's no real uh, um, touching. The, the, the wires are not really connected anywhere. They're all crossed up, but there's no real power taking place because there's no real relationship. Right. So but the unity that I'm talking about is that kind of unity that says, if you touch my brother, you touch me. Wow. Amen. From the, the least to the oldest. Mm -hmm. If you touch my brother, you touch me. Right. Amen. And and, and I know this for a fact. There, there's no uncovering of another. Amen. When we have that real unity, we're not uncovering. We're not divulging information that don't need to be out. We don't find uh, um, things that... Um, Achilles heels that people have and, and harp upon that because we're we're unified. Right. We're not a club. See, some people have a, a a union mentality, but not a unity mentality. Right. There's a big difference. Right. You can have a union mentality where there's there's you just have a self interest. You're all about what you want, uh, what you want to do, what you want to understand, what you want to propagate, what you want to push. You know. But when we're in unity. It's not even about you. It's not me, but it's about him. Amen. Right. So when I say unity has to be developed, we develop a unity that we understand in harmony and oneness that is all about him. So I throw my, myself to the side. I throw my feelings to the side. I throw all those things because it ain't about me anyway. Amen. It's right. all about him. Right. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Want to make sure, make sure you got that, amen. It's all about Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. So, um, the, notice how the ointment, and I'm done. Notice how the ointment or the oil flows. It flows down from the beard to the skirts. It starts on the head. The beards, the skirts, amen. And it don't. And I don't believe there's an individual anointing. You you can't have an individual anointing. There there is an anointing on the body as a whole, not just an individual. Oh, I'm anointed over here, so um, everything's whatever I say. This is how things go. Or I'm anointed over here. If you're part of a church body, the anointing comes down from the head. Amen. And then go down to the body. So anyone that steps outside of that, they're no longer in the line, amen, to really have the anointing and to be blessed. Because God is a God of order. Right. Okay. He anoints the head. Thank you, honey. He anoints the head, amen, and the oil flows down from the head down to the body. He never, I never saw where the anointing, they went to the shoulders and started anointing the shoulders. Or they started at, at his chest, or they started at his hip and started anointing. That, that's totally crazy, amen. When he anoints, when anyone anoints, it always comes from the head. So you should have a good relationship with your shepherd, amen, amen. because you're all connected. As we're connected, the Lord's speaking. He's not going to go past the shepherd. But sometimes we think that he's going to go past the shepherd to go to you, but that's not how God works. He goes through the shepherd. Right. Even if the shepherd's going to give you something that's a confirmation, he's going to give it to the shepherd. Right. So that's the reason we have to remember and understand how important relationship is 
in the body of Christ because we're all working together. It's not saying that one member is better than the other member. Right. No, I'm not saying that. Amen. It's but what not I, saying that the Lord won't give you something. And I'm not saying, right, thank you, that the Lord won't give you something because he will give you something. But I want you to know when God's getting ready to pour his anointing oil, it's going to come from the head first. It'll start at the top, yeah. That's, that's, that's just how God does it. Order. Amen. That's the proper order, and that's what we're, we're learning. We're learning what protocol is. We're learning what order is. And if the head says, this is what we're going to do, then guess what? This is what we're going to do. When Moses spoke and said, we're going to go through the water, everybody was crying. They were screaming. They said, we're about to die. Moses said that we just look up for your redeem for, for our, 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 our yeah. salvation. Amen. It's before us. Amen. And he didn't even know how God was going to deliver. But because he did believe God, God opened up that sea for him. Right. Amen. And he brought quails and, and he brought uh, manna down. Right. To feed them. God always took care, but he always spoke to the head. David, when they, they went to Ziglag and they, they burned it, took, tore his, took his wives and their children, and the men was about to turn on David. David just went and conferred with the Lord, and he encouraged himself. And he talked to God and said, what shall we do? David, the king, the head. And the king and God said to David, you shall go down and you shall recover all. You shall recover all. Everything. You're going to get it all back. But he spoke it. Listen, he didn't speak it to anyone else. He didn't get Joab, his his commander. He didn't get any of the kings, all the other people that was working, all the the leadership. He didn't call the priest. He didn't call no one. He went to the leader. He went to the head. When Jacob was taking a walk, amen, and God said, I'm going to change your name to Abraham, amen, I mean (laughs) Israel, amen. So when he was taking a walk, amen, and God met him, and he wrestled with him, he wrestled with the angel, and the angel had to break his hip to get away from him, and he said, I won't let you go unless you bless me. He was standing for all Israel, amen, so God blessed him, and as he blessed him, the people was blessed. Right. And I think we need to place the, the, the respect and the honor back, amen. And I'm not just talking about me as a leader. I'm a leader, but you are a leader too. But in our places of leadership, understand that God anoints the head first, amen, in your family, in your home, before your children, amen. I spoke to all my children. I led my children to the Lord. Amen. Because I was the priest. I had a pastor over me. I had an apostle over me. But in my house, I was the man. Right. But when I came to church, you know, I was under the shepherd. Amen. Because we had another man who was the shepherd. Amen. So we understand where authority is. And God never works outside of his authority. Wow. And the anointing flows good. down from the head. Praise God. So uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and go through our uh, questions. I don't think I have the questions that I had from last week. I, I think I may have one or two because I do all this stuff fresh. So um, so let's, let's just go ahead and get with it. Um, the first question. You ready? Yep. Let me know. I'm just waiting for. You ready, honey? Yep. Okay. Here's the first question. We need blank in the body of Christ. We need blank in the body of Christ. What is it that we need in the body of Christ? Amen. We need blank blank in the body body of of Christ. Christ. Go back to the answer. Okay. All right. I got it. Go back to your thing. Okay, we need blank and okay. Pastor Rose said relationship. Relationship is that our question? Yes. That's our ask. I mean, is that our answer? That, yes, that is our. Anybody answer. else? Anybody Keisha else? Keisha said unity. Good answer, Keisha. Okay, anybody else? And it else? is true. Anybody else? Carla Stewart said unity. Amen. Okay. Good answer, Carla. Good answer. Anybody Good else? Good answer. We were looking for unity, but we we were looking for relationship, but we need unity too. So anybody else want to try? Okay, you didn't tell them what the answer is, so that's we, okay now. The answer was relationship. Amen. We, that's the answer we was looking for. We amen. were looking for relationship. But we do need unity, and that's one of the answers as well here. Yes. But uh, y'all kind of got ahead of me there. So we need relationship in the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, 
The next question is blank is brought into the body naturally and spiritually when members are deficient because other members are not bringing in their supply. Oh, that's too much for me to talk. <laughs> Repeat that question for them. Blank is brought into the body. Um, I'll just I'll sh I'll shorten it. Uh, when members, let me see, are not supplying. When members don't supply their their portion or they're okay, not that's supply. Good. That's good. Blank is brought into the body. Okay, they already started coming in. Uh, Pastor Rose said lack and poverty. Okay, very good. Awesome. Anybody else? Who said that? It's Pastor Rose. Uh, Keisha Pastor said Rose. lack. Pastor Rose. Okay, lack. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody Pastor else? Rose, call me when we get off. I need to talk to you. All right. Anyone okay, I'm else? I'm hearts for Keisha and Pastor Rose. Okay. Carla said discord. Okay. Good answer, Carla. But we were looking for what, Bishop? Um, Black, right? Well, well, you're going to do, or because you keep telling them the answer. Well, no, I'm saying. Okay, the word, the answer is lack. Lack is brought to the body, um, 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 naturally and spiritually, when the members don't bring their part, when people don't perform their portion, when they're not doing what they're supposed to do, if they're not standing in their place, we're going to have a place <laughs> of lack. Evangelist Pat, she's so funny. She said, lack and money and money. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's part of it. I that's mean, we, we do need our, our the finances you need to, you know, because I can't go to, um, when I pay the church bill, I can't go there and, and start speaking in tongues because they're going to say, well, that's all you got. We're kicking you out the building. Amen. Right. So um, these things are important, but not only the money, but when we bring our, um, we have a, our, our our audio person, right. and we have you know that's doing wonderful things. We're on Facebook and we're on YouTube, thanks to our director over our audio, Carla Sister Rose. Carla Rose. Yay. Amen. So those are the things that I'm talking about that you're bringing to the table. We need our, our finances, but we also need the gifts. We need you know those things that help to. Um, Strengthen the body, amen. So those things are very important. So, but lack is brought to the body when we do not supply the things that we need, amen. Yeah. But Carla Thank had you. a really good answer too when she said, "Discord is brought to the body when we don't bring the things we need." That was actually yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what discord does, amen, it it causes problems, and then it just it just hurts everybody all the way around. Nothing comes good out of it. Yes. Nothing. Amen. Amen. So, uh, okay, very good, very good, everybody. The next question is: um, There are no greater or lesser members in the body in terms of blank to God. Oh, read that again, please. There is no greater or lesser members. So there's no big eyes and little U's in the body in terms of um, blank to God. Do I need to type that out? Because they 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 coming too fast for me. So. No, no? Okay. and you know, I, I think I may have mentioned that last week, and I don't think I brought it up, so they may not know this they one. They may not know that one. I, I, I like to tell you what, I'm, I don't think it was even in some of the teachings. So here, I'm going to give you a freebie on this one, okay? There is no greater or lesser members in the body in terms of accessibility. Accessibility one of, to Accessibility God. to God. So we all have access to God, Amen. We all have access to God by the Spirit, Amen. So, um, there is no He don't just talk to me or just talk to a certain individual. But the anointing, like I said, it does. He does have an order, but we can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ ourselves, Amen. All of us. So anybody has accessibility to God, Amen. Okay. So uh, the next question: uh, Members of the church is to dwell in. Blank, and y'all already answered the question, so if you just say what you said before, it's the right answer. It starts with a U. Members of the church are to dwell in blank. Dwell in blank. Yeah, they answered the question already, actually. Yes, they did. 
to Amen. dwell in. Pastor Rose said unity. Excellent, Mother Rose. Excellent, Pastor. Thank you, uh, Elder. Evangelist Amen. Evangelist Pat said unity. Thank you, Evangelist. Elder Amen. Regina Elder, said, thank you. You, you can see Pastor. That. Pastor, amen. Thank you, Lord God. Who, anybody else? Sister Lakeisha. Sister Lakeisha, unity. That, amen. So that's the answer. Members of the church are to dwell in unity. Yes. Amen. We awesome. need unity. It's very important. It's vital to our success as the body of Christ. Amen. That we can destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. Through unity. One put a thousand to flight. Two put ten thousand. You put five of us, five of us together. Oh, we run them all the way out of the city. Come amen. On now. With unity. Unity With is a unity. good thing. Amen. And we can connect. Amen. We can make some things work. So the next question. Um, and members, instead of saying amen, should have the uh, you know what? I don't I don't I'm not gonna give you that one because we didn't cover that one. Um we did not. No, so let's skip that one. Okay, number six is God is a God of order. And the blank flows to the body from the blank. God is a God of order. The blank flows to the body from the blank. Anybody? Anybody. God is a God in okay. order. Evangelist Pat, from the head. Amen. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Sister Lakeisha, from the head. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? You only gave me part of it, though. It said, the blank, the blank flows. flows. What's the blank? What's the blank? You got the last word was, was head, from the head, but the blank flows from the head. What's, what's, what's uh, missing? Pastor Rose says the oil flows from the head. Almost, almost. The keep going, keep going. Almost. <laughs> okay. It starts with an A. So Keisha said, she tried it again. She said oil. Mm -hmm. It starts with an A. It starts with an A. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody? Okay, Pastor Rose said anointed. Amen. Yay. There you go. You got it. That's it. So the anointing flows to the body from the head. Lakeisha said anointed. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lakeisha. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Good job. Who's, who said it first? Was that Pastor, Pastor Rose? Pastor Rose, and then Pastor Lakeisha Rose said it Lakeisha. before you said it. Okay, very good. Thank you, Sister Lakeisha. All right, very good. So here's the last question, and um, just anybody who can, just give me um, uh, the answer. It says, what does relationship supply to the body? What does relationship, relationship supply to the body? I, I would like to have an answer from everybody, if you could. What does relationship supply to the body? relationship because we, we're finishing this lesson relationship in the body of Christ so I think it's a befitting uh, question to ask since we've had two weeks now uh, what does relationship supply to the body okay Lakeisha first oneness oneness awesome oh, I like that awesome awesome I like that come on Keisha. come on with it what else oneness oneness yes let me have my pen over here. Okay. There's a pencil over here. Okay, so, anybody else? Okay. And then she said unity. And unity. Very Oneness good. And unity. Anybody Very else? good. What does relationship supply to the body of Christ? And we're looking for an answer for everybody if you can give us an answer. Oneness and we got unity. We got okay. oneness, togetherness. Uh, togetherness, very good faith. evangelist. Thank you, evangelist. Good one. I like that. Wonderful, one great, great word, great okay. word. Good. Faith. Good. Okay, who gave? Who said that? Lakeisha. Good one, Lakeisha. She's, She's on coming road. back, huh? Pastor Rose said connection, one accord, and harmony. Woo wee! Connection, one accord, and harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Rose. Amen. 
Thank you for gracing us tonight. Your brother just jumped on. Leonard said, good evening. Good, oh, oh, good evening, Leonard. God bless you. All the way from Arizona. Amen. God bless you. Good evening. Amen. Okay. Anybody uh, else? Regina said, place of oneness place and of one oneness. accordness. Thank you, Elder. Like Place that. of oneness and one accordness. Sister Carter Thank you, said Elder. partnership. I oh like my goodness, that. partnership. Good. Very good. I, you know what? I would. I wish I'd have thought of that. Amen. That's a, that's a very good one. Amen. Partnership. Amen. Oneness, one accord, unity, togetherness. Amen. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. I miss Sister Venus tonight. Amen. I know. And I'm I asking know. everyone that's listening to pray for her. They had a, a death in the family. So did Elder. Amen. So let's keep them in prayer because they're one with us. And we traffic in the same thing that they traffic in because we're family. So I'm asking everyone to just remember um, Sister Venus and remember um, our Elder. Amen. She's on tonight. Remember them in prayer. They've had losses in the family. Amen. And we just had a loss. So I do understand Amen. What you know, what what goes on behind that? Amen. Amen. So we're praying that the Lord will bless and comfort them in His love. Amen. Mm -hmm. so. Um, um, Evangelist Pat said, "Love and love." Wow, beautiful. Love, love. That is good. Thank you, Evangelist. Okay. Uh, Sister Dancy said hi. Hey, Sister Dancy, how are you? It was nice seeing you in the store a couple of weeks ago. A little bit. <laughs> you and your husband. Amen. God bless you. It's beautiful. Um, so um, now we're going to go to our true and false. Um, first, the first question: true or false? When all members are supplying what God has for them to give, there will be abundance in the body of Christ. Is that true or false? When all members are supplying what God has for them to give. There will be abundance in the body of Christ. Is that true or is that false? Everybody, anybody. Okay, Sister Shanice said true. Amen. Very good, Sister Shanice. Sister Carla. Uh, Sister okay. Shanice. Hey, yeah, Sister Shanice. Shanice. Hey. I want to see you this week. We miss you, okay? I want you to answer. <laughs> Sister Carla had answered the last question. Okay. She said one accord. Okay. But then back to this one. It's true and false. True and false. Akisha, okay. true. True. Very good. And then, uh, Evangelist Pat, true. Very good. Pastor Rose, Evangelist. true. Thank you, Sister Pastor. Carla, true. Thank you, Sister Carla. Sister true. Lisa, hey. Hey, yes. Sister Lisa. Amen. Sister, God bless Sister, uh, Lisa you. Hart. Okay. Hey, Mama Hart. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So the answer is true. So you guys got it. Amen. So all members are supplying what? Uh, has been given to them to give. As we give, there will be abundance in the house. And and don't just hear and, and listen uh, uh, what, to what we're saying, but let it be a practical, put it to practical application. Bring your gifts. Bring all that you have to the Lord. Amen. Your gifts, your, your, your increase, your whatever it is, so it can uh, strengthen the body of Christ. Amen. And God is going to honor you for what you do, all all I have, I give to the Lord. Amen. Your time, your, your time, efforts, even your time, your, your talents, efforts. You your know, gifts. your your talents, your gift, your your money, your finances. I mean, we all it's all needed in the body of Christ. Yes. And and because we are His arms, we are His hands, we are His legs in this earth. Amen. So so it's important that we understand the importance of doing so. So the next question is: Churches must look inward inward to meeting the needs of the members is that true or false mm, churches sounds, must look inward um meeting the needs of the members that sounds like a trick question hmm. churches must look inward is that true or false hmm. i'm not sure Sure. Sister Carla said, Sister Carla Stewart said it's true. But I'm not so sure about that. Maybe it's the way Ms. Boyer would say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Well, oh, Lakeisha said that's false. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? 
Amen. I know sometimes people be afraid they didn't want to say the wrong thing. Right. But it, it is false. The answer is false. Amen. Churches need, see, we don't need to look inward at each other. We need to look outward, amen, to grab other people, to bring people in to help what we've already set in place. Oh, so, false. yeah, so thank you. It's false. So we, we need to look outward, amen, and be, be innovative like, um, like our sister, uh, Carla, she looked out to get some help to help me to do the things I didn't know how to do. She had some information, but she went out and got what we needed. What if she kept walking a person, person inside, but nobody knew what to do. But as she went and got other help, we were able to do the things that we needed to get done because we were able to be open-minded to go forth and get the help that we needed. Amen. 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 So it's false. Church must look outward to meet the needs of the members. You, for us to meet those needs, we have to go past ourselves. Amen. Shanice, I said false too. Very good, Sister Shanice. God bless you. Um, next question, which is the last true and false question, it says, one of um, one with such discernment may come into a local church and expound. I don't think it's fair for me to give you this because no. I didn't cover it. I kind of mm -hmm. skipped over this in my lesson. Um, but it, it's saying one with discernment may come to the local church and expound or expose its problems. And what it's actually talking about is that if someone comes in to preach at your church and they have discernment and they can look at the church and say, oh, they got some problems in this area or this person got some hatred and this person is, 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 is greedy. So he gets in there and say, y'all, y'all greedy. Y'all need to stop being greedy. Y'all need to stop doing, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that and expose those problems when you're coming in to visit. Amen. We don't, we don't look to bring out people's um, uh, idiosyncrasies or flaws. No, uh, we, when we find a sin that's been uh, committed, we, we look at it in a different view. We look at it in terms of being sorrowful for that person to pray for them, not to look for a way to hurt them or bring them down. Amen. Because we are the people of God and we are a people that love God. Amen. And we should love each other. Amen. No, I take it back. We do love each other. Yeah, we, we, we short on time. Just ask one of them. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to ask the last question. It's just a, a true, it's not a true and false question, just an answer for everyone. And it is, why are the joints important to the body of Christ? Why are the joints important? important to the body of Christ. Why are the joints important? The Bible says in, in our scripture text that every joint will supply. Every joint will supply. So, and, and if we understand what a joint is, and what does it do, and why is it important? Why is a joint important? in the body of Christ. Okay. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Going twice. Well, honey, you answer that. Why is okay. joint? Okay, nope. Evangelist Pat said because it supplies the other joints. Okay, okay. It's, it supplies to the other parts of the body, amen, what they need. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Very Pastor. good. That was Very really good. That to so, the other joints or amen. parts of the body, what they need. Good. And anybody else? Yeah, Pastor Rose said it holds things together. It holds things together. It supplies, it holds things together. What else does a joint do? Remember, we, we, we talked about last week, the joints are like the knees, amen, the arm, the end of the arms, the knuckles, amen. They're, they're, these are joints on the natural body, but in the spirit, when we talk about joints, you know, they keep things together, amen. They, they, they hold things in place, amen. They bring health. They supply nutrition to the yeah. body, amen. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And and uh, what what Evangelist Pat said, that's powerful, you know, in the fact that you get one joint and mm-hmm. you have to connect it with that other joint. Yes. That yes. other joint can't move until that one joint is connected to it. Absolutely. That, Absolutely. That's just real, that's profound right there. Yeah, the joints are very, very vital to the, 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 the strengthening of or the pro- progressing forward of the body. Amen. We need the joints. Okay. Um, Lakeisha said, um, okay, Lakeisha said, each part of the body does, if each part does not, of the body does not bring their part, the body can't work together. Amen. Yeah, if everybody do don't bring their part, the body can't work together. And, Amen. and Evangelist Pat said, because one joint feeds the other joint. One joint feeds That's the other That's good. Mm-hmm. That was good. One joint feeds the other joint. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, everyone. What a beautiful... Um, I, y'all have taught me, y'all took me to school this morning, tonight. Amen. This evening. Praise God. So, thank you for being on tonight. Um, next week, we're going to... I think I've got it wrote down here. Where did I put it? Next week, we're going to be going over the law, no, 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 um, a clear view of dominion, a clear view of dominion will be on that subject matter on next week, amen, we pray that you are able to make it, and we're talking about spiritual protocol, the law, the, the law of subjection, and as we are under authority, then God can move because we have things in proper order and we can move in our ranks, amen, and begin to do exploits for our king, Mighty amen. Exploits. Mighty exploits. So at this time, we're going to just, um, if you will, we, we will not leave off this broadcast without offering people an invitation or an opportunity to know who Jesus is. So at this time, Pastor Elaine. Man, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. God bless you, everyone. I pray that you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us on our, in our Bible study on tonight. We look forward to seeing you on next week, but I'll see you on Sunday, amen. And if I don't see you on this side of heaven, I'll see you in the air, amen. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful evening. God bless you.